各位观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看 J 与 J 论坛，由我与我们的好朋友 Jim n o w a y 一起来跟大家讨论这个礼拜的时事。Jim, what a glorious day it is in Houston, Texas. It's it's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. I spent most of the day outside and enjoyed it all along. I, I hold my meetings in the yard by the by my by my little lake and my pool now because it's it's been raining for what two weeks straight without light. Yeah, yeah. And the benefit of being outside is you have even less risk of transmission from COVID.、So. <laughs> well, we you know we were just talking about it before we recorded.、Uh, compared to this to last year, as a nation, I'm so proud of what what we've done. Our numbers are transparent, and and the numbers are going down. And everyone, at least the people I know, are vaccinated. You are vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. We.、Right. We're in a much better place, right? And and the other thing is, we in Texas、um, have been successful really in two fronts.、Um, our records are good, but we've done it by being open and、uh, business open as well as transparent open. And some of the places like California and New York,、um, despite their real intense lockdown and peer pressure and internal criticism. Their results are worse than ours, and hence their leadership are in trouble.、Uh, Cuomo to, to, to the governor,、uh, both governors are are are, are the, the pandemic showcases whether you're capable of leading. It it, it it exposes what kind of leaders, politician or leader that you are, and what kind of leader you are. Yeah, you, you brought out accountability, and and I mean, you've been an elected official. You've worked in public sector, and and you've led.、Uh, Uh, government、uh, positions, and you've been a, a leader in the private sector. You know what it takes, and that's a perfect example of what's going on here in Taiwan, Republic of China, or should I say, Republic of China, Taiwan?、Uh, do you know what's going on over there, except for the headlines? I, I watch it from the headlines, but but really,、um, I've not looked at it deeply. And even if, as an American looking in from outside, there's no way I could understand the nuances of what's happening down below, but.、Uh, Taiwan has been held up as a, a real example, almost a model, because of its success. But unfortunately, what I understand to be the case is they're undergoing a new wave that is becoming very devastating, and they're under lockdown and all other belated types of remedies right now. But I think for the benefit of our viewers as well as me, Jimmy, why don't you explain what's going on? Jim,、uh, I I I don't don't mean to、uh, get too far, but I I am very well aware of what's going on in Taiwan. I follow Taiwan politics and Taiwan's pandemic response for a long time.、Uh, full disclosure: I have family in Taiwan. Sure, sure. my elderly father,、um, my parents. It, it it's it hurts me. It pains me and it enrages me. Um, because of exactly what you said, this myth is perpetrated by the public relations arm of this current ruling totalitarian so-called political party. The rhetoric they have used, like I said, compared to New York and California, is the same thing. They manipulate, they control media,、um, they they hold themselves up as a democracy.、Mm-hmm. It. Is a directly elected government, but voters could be manipulated because media could be controlled.、Mm-hmm. For democracy, so-called democracy,、mm-hmm. this party, the DPP, has closed out TV stations recently. Imagine the administration here dislikes Fox and shuts them down with Trump up charges, shutting down a news a, a news station. Or let's say another regime decides to shut down CNN. That will not happen here in the United States of America, and that's the difference between a real democracy and a and a and one that pretends to be one. In Taiwan, politics has infiltrated its pandemic response. The image, the myth that was held up as a model, was bought and paid for by the government, and this is not hearsay. This is facts. This government in Taiwan employs a lot of. Trolls on the internet. They call it one four five zero. They're paid by leading public opinion, pretending that it is、uh, what the majority of folks in Taiwan says.、Mm-hmm. Uh, full disclosure: the people of Taiwan are kind and they are self aware. The reason why the pandemic was not an issue for the past year and a half is because everyone wore masks voluntarily from the beginning 
Why did they do that? Because they went through SARS almost two decades ago, 2003. It devastated Taiwan. Taiwan was one of the last countries to be removed, to be removed from the SARS list. A lot of people died. The fact that Taiwan is so close to China, distance-wise, mm-hmm. where there's so much trade and visitors back and forth, creates this um, huge dilemma that how, how, how do you control it? How could a Taiwan be okay for you to have? Everyone wore masks, everyone social distance, everyone followed. But this is not from the government's direction. But this current leadership, there's no accountability. In any other so-called elected a democracy, if you failed, if you made these grave mistakes, you usually, you have to leave your position or you apologize. This government does not. They make up lie after lie. And the arrogance is astounding. And why could they do that? Because they control the media. They control the judiciary branch. We mentioned many times what's great about you at United States is that our judges are, are, are ju- judiciary branch. The three, three separation of power is not happening in Taiwan. The, the elected officials, of course, are just party, all party loyalty. The administration... The, the, the judicial branch, the judges are all now political appointees. So that means there's no voice. There's no one to tell you, hey, what you're doing is wrong and you're lying. You can't call them out. They'll silence you. Immediately they put like a McCarthyism. They tell you that you're a commie. They put their red hat on you and it's over. That way, that way they could get away with everything. Every mistake they made, every failure in policy, every lie they say, they blame it on China. Does China have... Issues, it definitely has, but that has nothing to do with your own failure as a leader. This pandemic was controlled for a year and a half because people were masked. Mm-hmm. But the leader in Taiwan, the political appointee for the CDC there, he is a dentist by trade. Mm-hmm. He has claimed that they have prepared for this. They did not. They have covered up and lied about numbers in order to hold up this myth. Could you imagine? They knew that the virus is ravaging, that is out, is not under control. They have no idea who has it, but they cover up the numbers. That is the biggest danger. That is the the biggest lie you can say to the people. And now that it's out of control, they then you go back and say, well, at this point, the only thing that will save the 23, 24 million people in Taiwan is vaccine. Well, a lot of countries have vaccines now. Taiwan is a developed country. It is not a third world country. Mm-mm. You know what the government says about the vaccine? It says they, they couldn't buy any because of inter- interference from China. You know what China told them? China said, hey, because China has to develop their own vaccine that is highly rated. China says, that's not true. Here, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you to save your people. They'll come back. Then they came back and say, being racist, basically, saying, no, 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 we don't trust yours. Okay, then why didn't you buy from Pfizer or Moderna? You know why? They, they, they could have bought it last year. They could have bought it this year, but now it's on the open. They didn't buy it because the middleman wants to use taxpayer money to make a huge profit. This is out in the open. This is not, they're not hiding it. They're, they can't even deny it anymore. And the people in Taiwan, a lot of them are just like, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of us, um, hardworking, educated. A lot of them don't vote or they don't want to deal with it. They feel helpless. And also the rhetoric that they have brainwashed. What it is that they brainwashed. This, this political party came, came in power 20 years ago. It was built on the basis of anti-China and they changed history. They went into textbooks and erased a lot of things to, to create this enemy. That way it'll, it, it could cover themselves up for their mistakes. Mm-hmm. So the pandemic response, this failure is just the result of 20 years of getting away with it. Mm-hmm. No accountability. You know, Jim, I don't even know where to start to tell you how bad it is. Kind of closing TV stations, um, people that do the work, the professionals, the scientists, they're not, they're not used. They don't listen to them. Everybody mm-hmm. is about party and party loyalty. Everybody's lying. And the lies they say is, is astonishing. Jim, politicians, they manipulate. You know, you want to get votes. You make promises. You know, I get it. You want to win an election. 
You don't do that. You actually do your work. There's that's why politicians like you have a a, a, a track record of success in Taiwan. These are political dynasties. Daddy, yeah. mommy, uncle, auntie. I mean, everyone is is is. What is it called? Um, what is it? What do you call it when you when you only use your own people? Um, a paternalism. Yes, ne nepotism. Yeah. There you go. And, and, and there is no there is no professionals. Everyone is a politician. Everyone just basically says, "President, you know, rah rah." Mm -hmm. Everything you say is right. Whew. I, I'm letting off steam because my family is stuck there, and I know a lot of people in Taiwan that realize, "Oh my God, it's too late now." Because 20 years of this, there's no way of coming back. There's no opposition party. There's no balance. There's no media. There's no prosecutor or judges that would prosecute this kind of graft and corruption and incompetence. Mm -hmm. This is true incompetence. It is just a shame to see Taiwan. You're familiar with Taiwan. You have a lot of friends here that are from this great, great, great island. Whatever politics between China and Taiwan, we cannot change that. We're just we're just normal citizens. We're just normal people. Or or people in Taiwan, they're just they don't they don't they don't get a cut of the profits like the government officials to do. So a very small amount of people, the leadership in Taiwan, this current ruling party, for their own benefit, for their own bank account, they are risking and gambling the lives of 23 million people away. This will not happen here, or even England or France or Japan or Korea. It will not, because there is check and balance. This, the, the shameful thing is that Taiwan went from, like you said, the model, the, 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 the first truly elected government for Chinese people to this, where the opposition party will never win again because the voting process is controlled. Um, I, I don't want to bring up voter fraud because there, we cannot have proof because you cannot go in the country and get proof when the entire system is controlled. And I'm not making this up. This is a fact. The president's diploma, the PhD was made up too. I mean, this is so, because all you have to do is show it. She can't even show it. And, and she, this is not one thing. It's a, a whole series of steps that got to this point. It's logical and reasonable. What they're doing now, we predicted it years ago. We knew this would happen when it's unchecked when they keep doing these, it went from small lies, which you could tell, and small grievances and mistakes to these big, big lies that will, will it's setting Taiwan back years and years. It is just a shame. And Jim, I'm sorry, I'll stop now because I don't know what, where I could go. I don't, is there any questions? I, I could go in detail of every incident or, or how it got here, but that, that, that will take hours to get there. Well, I think the, the main question is what's, what's, what's ahead? Um, will Taiwan be successful in um, uh, reducing the, uh, uh, the cases, uh, stamping out the disease? Um, can the United States airlift um, a big volume of vaccines in on a humanitarian basis to stop the spread? What, no. uh, the, the AIT, which is the facto uh, United States organization, because Taiwan's not recognized as, as a sovereign state, uh, the AIT in Taiwan already said publicly that no, Taiwan is not one of the one of the countries that not one of the areas that needs the help because the numbers are high, but it's not as high as say India or other places. My point is, this is not humanitarian. China already offered U.S. We were Taiwan's Taiwan's taxpayers. How do I say this? There is a lot of budget. Mm -hmm. The government of Taiwan has budget. They have a lot of funds to purchase, to purchase this. This they don't they, they don't need any humanitarian aid. They could buy it. They did buy it over and over. They didn't buy it because the price. Because they want to pocket that difference. Is graft is corruption. So it's not that. And also everything became. You cannot treat the pandemic and use it as a political rhetoric, as a way to control and cheat votes. Mm -hmm. The pandemic has doesn't care what race or what people you are, or what party you're loyal to. So right. that's what they're doing. So your, your questions are legitimate. Would it be controlled? No, I tell you why. Right now, everyone knows, everyone in Taiwan, they don't want to die and plot the SARS. And also Taiwan is highly condensed. A lot of people living in small places. That's why it's harder in places like California. Well, Taiwan's the same. 
people live in high rises. Um, people still, they, they, governments still haven't, haven't fully locked it down because it makes them look bad, you know, because that myth that they created, this model nation. So what they're doing is they're denying what's going on. They're still lying about numbers. And the only way to stop it is vaccine. And there is no vaccine. They keep saying, oh, well, <laughs> I, I, let, me, let me tell you what's going on then, okay, since, since you're asking the right questions. The government don't, didn't buy Pfizer or Moderna. The government don't want to take China's free vaccine. They claim they're developing their own. Being in, in, in Wall Street, the pharmaceutical industry takes years to develop. It's a huge investment. It takes government help. Taiwan is a small place. They never had that infrastructure. So for them to claim they can make their own it's a farce. It's not happening. However, what they're doing is they're manipulating the stock price. They're, they're putting out this news that we're, we don't have vaccine, but we're developing our own. So the government leaders, the people inside that benefits from it, they all bought stock of these companies. And they all went up a lot based on that news three months ago, six months ago. Mm -hmm. Right? It's logical, right? So they profit all this. And then they, knowing that the, there's not going to be a vaccine and then after, before the prices fall off the cliff, they, you know, they already, they already make their money. And then they go, the government, maybe next month or two months, three months, whatever it is, either get something or buy something. They do have some, they have maybe what, 300,000, 400,000 doses of some third rate. I, I don't want to say the name. I don't want to get in trouble, but that vaccine has been proven to be unusable. The people talk about don't want to take that. Because they know the success rate is low and there's blood clot. This is not a Johnson Johnson or Moderna or, or Pfizer. No, this is some off-brand, like no developed country is using it. So what the government there is doing, they're forcing military to, to take it first. No one wants to take it. And plus, that's not going not to help when there's 300,000, when there's 24 million people. Does that make sense? It might actually do more harm than good. Because and precisely. An inappropriate vaccine can have side effects and and other maladies that may not otherwise be known. It is, it is you, you hit the nail right on the head. And then they claim that the local, the, the one thing is Taiwan that cannot control their internet. Um, they try, they hire people to, to you know, the 1450s I mentioned earlier. The government has been caught and proven they pay people trolls on the, on the internet to control a discussion, mm -hmm. to control, to lead, right? Mm -hmm. to, to pretend. But the people of Taiwan, they're finally speaking up. The doctor, hey, hi, baby. Hey, hi. You say hi to Uncle Jeremy. Hi, what's up? This is my, my, my baby. Maybe I'm, I'm actually taking I know I, oh, that's, I'm actually taking it, baby. I'm sorry, I apologize, Jim. I, I can't lock this, my, my, my study and. Looks like he's gonna be a judge with the big gavel. <laughs> oh, my youngest is so cute, but I can't. He knows I usually tape at night, you know, I wait till they go to sleep, but this afternoon one day, sorry. Uh, so, so when I talk about, talk about what's going on in the Republic of China, compared to what's going on, it's the transparency you mentioned earlier. Um, we, we criticized China in the beginning, and granted, they made a lot of mistakes, but the fact is they controlled it. They did open up. Their numbers are open. I mean, you can do any research online, you'll see. And people that live in China, we have a lot of expats in China. They're fair, you know, we're Americans. We'll tell the truth. They're trapped, you know, they, they know where it comes from, the, on their phone, the government is under control. U.S., no matter how bad it got, we were always open. Our government, we demand it, and we have accountability. I don't care who's in the White House. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the majority, it's the local and states that, that demands this. As voters, we demand it, and there's an expectation. You don't do a good job, you will not be voted in, and that's a fact. And, and there's still shame, you know, there's still beauty, there's still a sense of right and wrong. As a Christian nation, to be honest, we we, we, we expect that and, and that they have responded. We're open. The numbers are bad, but we know what's going on. Now the vaccines up, we, we know which state and which county down to how many people have been vaccinated, how many doses available. All that matters. In China, they're doing the same thing. But Taiwan, Taiwan had a year and a half heads up. Taiwan bragged with this, this model, with this myth that they paid for. They paid public relations companies to, to spread this. They said, you know, the slogan they had is Taiwan can help. They were sending out masks to other countries when the people in Taiwan didn't have masks. 
mm-hmm. last year. It's a farce. But the way that this government in Taiwan does it is they think that just by controlling media, by controlling rhetoric, they can manipulate people. And but but the people in Taiwan knows what's going on now. Other people, the international community, don't know what's going on because Taiwan doesn't really matter. It's a small country. A lot of people just hear you know headlines and and what's bought. Remember we talk about media. Sure. Media could be bought. This is it. It it, it showcased perfectly here. Sure. And now, because of this virus, it's exposed to all of them. We talked about capability, capable leaders. I always said that politics is politics. You have a right to to have this. That's possibly one of the votes. That's fine. But you still have to be able to maintain and and, and rule. Right. You have to you have to govern. If you cannot govern, but and it comes down to only using racist rhetoric or blaming a different country or blaming somebody else, blaming U.S., blaming Japan, blaming China. It, it, it's, you cannot keep doing that. But if the people allow it, it's too late, Jim. My point is it's too late. The stock market has crashed. The competitiveness is gone. The trust in government is gone. I mean, a lot of people I know in Taiwan, tell us they don't vote. They're like, what's the point? They're going to win anyway. You know, there's you know, there's no point. I just can make my money and try to immigrate and get out. Or a lot of them just give up and go to China and work because that's what the future is. That's where the economy is booming and there's no more virus, no more pandemic. I'm sorry. I apologize for being very worked up, Jim. It, it hits me very close to my heart. Is I hold it very dear because I see how long it took for the Republic of China to go from a basically military military government, you know, from, from fighting Japanese with the U.S., to losing to the communist invasion, retreating to Taiwan till now. Let me put it this way. If you ask a Korean person, what are you? He'll say, I'm, I'm Korean American. I'm Korean. Whether you're North or South, you're Korean. Same thing with Vietnamese. What are you? Oh, I'm Vietnamese. I'm Vietnamese American. Are you Vietnamese from North or South? Nobody says that, right? It's, it's one race. Uh, or Germany. You ask Germans back then, even back then, no one's going to say, I'm East German. No, no, no. I mean, you, you, there's a different political party ruling it, but you're still German. But what happens in Taiwan is they're trying to, to differentiate. They're trying to create this enemy. They're saying, I'm not Chinese. I'm Taiwanese. It's like saying, what country are you from? Oh, I'm from, I'm a Texan. No, no, no. What country? No, no, no. I'm, I'm from Texas. I'm not American. I'm just Texan. That's what the Taiwanese government is trying to do. That way they could absolve themselves of their graft and corruption and incompetence. It's true incompetence. It's amazing. These folks will go down in history as murderers and as habitual liars. They are, they are, they're pathological liar. Could you imagine a government being a pathological liar? Um, we call them sociopaths. Yeah. That is, could you imagine a government that is a sociopathic government, not one person from the top down, you wouldn't imagine the things they say. As awful as that news is, I think history will show again and again when leaders act that way too strongly for too long, they create unrest, which is very widespread, and they don't last very long. Those, those systems get overturned. It, down through history, it's been very bloody, um, very difficult, but... But it really, sounds like you and me are on the same page. We're trying to incite the people to have a revolution. Yeah, and, and we hope that, that the pendulum doesn't swing so far as that there will be a revolution. But ultimately, that will happen. I mean, you just go through Europe. Um, how many times, how many different places, most recently in um, the Balkans? Um, <sighs> I, I understand what you're saying, Jim. You know, the yeah. shameful thing is that Taiwan cannot withstand one, and I'll tell you why. Well, Taiwan's I, an island. Well, it's, that's only part of their other difficulty because of the shadow of, of China. But China, uh, the PRC, is going to exploit whatever weaknesses there are internally within Taiwan. I mean, they're very smart people, and they can act very decisively. And they may be waiting for the Taiwanese to self-destruct. I think that would be a massive worldwide shame, but given this is why this is why as a tactical partner, the the military importance and then the balance that the Republic of China, Taiwan provides is critical. But yet they're squandering this opportunity and they're letting other sovereign nations dictate what you said about China is they're going to let me put it this way. China is not sending their warships 
to off the coast of California or New York, like during the Cuban Missile Crisis. We're the ones sending our warships to patrol. Taiwan is only a few hundred miles from China. Taiwan has always belonged to China, and the people from Taiwan are from China, one generation ago. Mm-hmm. At best, 70 years ago, or at best, 100 years ago. There are aboriginals that live in Taiwan, like the Native in- Americans here. They're the only ones that you could call true American, just like you can only call the true Taiwanese or the aboriginals. Everybody else in China, they use this rhetoric to brainwash people to create this enemy. I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. Do you want to maintain sovereign and, and resist China's influence? Yes, you should. To do that, you have to maintain your strategic importance by balancing the act. You cannot just one side the whole time. Same thing with a business that wants to make money in China. You want to go to China and profit your shareholders and make money. Or as a business owner, I want to go to China. But I don't get to go to China, make money from them, and then call them racist, tell them, tell them their government is wrong, communists needs to go down. You don't get to do that. You don't get to get both. As a nation, we cannot have Russians come here and, and set up some kind of social media company or, or buy a TV station and spread propaganda and then and make money and then allow them to criticize us and tell us that, you know, and try to undermine us. No country will allow that. But Taiwan could play this balance. Korea and Japan and Singapore, they're all small nations that depend on this delicate balance. Taiwan survived this long because of this balance. Mm-hmm. This war never ended. It is a civil war, essentially. Mm-hmm. One backed by the communists and one backed by by United States. Mm-hmm. It never stopped. But but you can't you can't sit there and just say it's China when these internal problems are caused by your corruption and your incompetence and your arrogance. We're losing that edge. Like you said, you said this, you say it so clearly, Jim. That's what my fear is that Taiwan is gonna go down into internal strife, it's gonna collapse. And China doesn't even need to take over. And I, I predict in 20 years, Taiwanese people were so poor and so fed up, they would ask China to come take over. Nobody wants, nobody wants that. Yeah. And, and what's, uh, excuse me, what's, uh, what's even more delicate is in today's world, with so many communication techniques called the internet and smart devices, how much information, I mean, one of the, the tales of Tiananmen Square um, back in the 80s was the fax machine. The the PRC thought that they could control internal communication. Well, that was fine until Chinese families from the United States and Europe and other parts of the world started faxing in um, the real truth. Uh, uh, Jim? Truth knows no borders. It ultimately knows no censors. You can delay it for a little while in a, in a short distance, but ultimately truth will prevail. You cannot stop information. But, but I give you another point. Though. I agree with you. But even when you know the truth, when you're facing the military with guns, when you don't have support or when the people are too beat down and scared to stand up, mm-hmm. then this truth doesn't matter. Because this truth is, you could manipulate, they could brainwash and say this truth is by the Western nations that want to undermine us. This truth is by, by people that benefit from this. Look, you want to bring up Tiananmen? Great. You're right. Information got up. But what has changed? The, the kids, the students that died, what has changed? And you know where the other side is coming from? You know what history has been re- rewritten? You know what they're saying? They're saying that some of these students are agents of the foreign, aid, foreign nations. Some of these students... You know what's sad? Some of that turned out to be true. You know why? They were able to escape. Even during this kind of military-ruled country, they mm-hmm. escaped because so many people helped from Hong Kong, from Taiwan. They escaped. You know where they are now? They're being paid by foreign nations to undermine China. So from their perspective, look, my point is don't interfere in other people's politics. We interfere in Iraq and Afghanistan and Vietnam and Korea. We lost all of them. The best way is to use our cultural influence. You don't need to have government. They could tell. They could see how we live. Or there are people that immigrated here. Don't go back and tell them this is a, this is what freedom is like. But by, by doing this, because, you know, for oil, for money, for control, China, whatever they're doing, they're learning from our mistakes. They went from a third world country to this. So this, what they are, that takes, I mean, it is a miracle. Yep. Does that mean that they're, 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 they're,
But this, but Taiwan's problem is not caused by China. I can tell you that right now. Right. It has nothing to do with China. It has nothing to do with the United States. Right. Each country is going to go to for, for strategic for their own benefit. It's inter- internal. Let, let me ask you if we can change the subject, Jimmy, before of course. we time, um, and talk about the event that we're going to have tomorrow at the uh, International Trade Center. Looking forward to it. Yes, yes. Um, You're the moderator tomorrow. I, I am the moderator of the uh, Master of Ceremonies, and it will be my pleasure to introduce somebody that really doesn't need an introduction. The uh, ambassador of Guinea to the United States is paying us all a visit, and uh, he will want to talk about increasing foreign trade between the two countries based upon mutual energy, uh, energy-based economies. <laughs> and based upon attracting foreign investment uh, to help them stimulate the support industries uh, for energy, help them finance infrastructure for their development, and help them promote a tourism industry. They have beautiful waterfronts, coasts, et cetera, um, but they too are striving to come from third world underdeveloped status into the second and the first world. And they're doing it in exactly the right way uh, Wei Li, who everybody um, on this show knows, is the founder of the International Trade Center and a big media magnate, um, is all about communication. He's all about relationships. He's all about building relationships for economic and personal and social benefit. So uh, tomorrow will just be another example of how we can work together with people throughout the globe for mutual benefit. As you can see, our producers put the fire up right now on the screen. If you can see it, uh, they had to register to attend, right? Yes. If you'd like yeah. to attend. Yeah. It's free. Register. Uh, free. There's so many opportunities. You get to see Jim in person. Uh, you get to learn a lot. ITC has always had luncheons and, and meetings and conferences and, and uh, opportunities to learn, to network, and to connect. That's what Wei Li and Jim Nowhere and ITC and Southern News is about because Houston is one of the most diverse. And now we're, like you said before, we're, we're I think we're going to overtake other cities as probably the most international city where there's, there's just opportunities everywhere. You have to explore it. And there's people that there to help. It is mutually beneficial. That has been your motto, Jim. And, and I'm learning that. My motto is to, to be mutually beneficial to everyone, to provide something where everyone benefit from it. Value. That's what ITC is. Win, 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 win. And you can always make it win, win. Don't take yeah. so much. Give a, yeah. give a little, you know. And this show is another example of that kind of communication outreach. So um, I'm pleased to be a part of the show. I'm really pleased to be a part of the International Trade Center. And I'm pleased to be part of Houston. So, Jim, thank you. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to talk. I, I'm about as as passionate or, or animated as you can be. And thank you for your patience to to sit here throughout this, you know, almost a year. I'm about as progressive or what the image of being left as you can be. And and you have the image of being conservative and 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 a certain. But but in the end, we're here. We're here. We could disagree on many things, but in the end, we're all. The basis of compassion and empathy and being a human being trumps it all. So I want to thank you once again. And I want all our viewers to know we wish you a happy Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy this weekend. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow and attend this and see Jim in person. Great. See you tomorrow. Thank, thank you, Jim. You. Have a good day. Bye-bye.